uh, what do you call this? Hanging Chinese, what the hell do you call this? Aloha folks, welcome back to Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. I'm uh, glad to have you guys back here. I have more guests tonight. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these before, but this is my vintage hanging Chinese lantern pick. It's a garnish from, uh, I don't know, 50s, 60s, 70s, and then it vanished. There was a time when these vanished, and that time was fairly recently, but they're back. And so that's the reason why I have my friends from the Contigo Tiki Bar joining me tonight. Why don't you guys come on the show? Let's do it. <laughs> Welcome to the Breezeway. Yeah, see? This is Anna and Greg from the Contigo Tiki Bar, and they were the ones who, I don't know, tell me the story. Basically lost life for the last two years to bring these back. To bring a cocktail garnish back. You it's look an admirable it. challenge. Well, look at it. It's a stick and an umbrella, and you think like, hey, no problem. Two years later. <laughs> two, so two years of development on these little hanging guys, and, uh, and but you did it. Yeah, thankfully, finally. You did it, and all of the bars are closed right now. Yep. <laughs> it's a perfect time. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great for home bars, for sure, but yeah. also, yeah, it's it's uh, it's great to be able to ramp up production, and then when the bars do reopen, some of the most incredible classic garnishes are gonna be back in your favorite tiki bars. Yeah, and you got a lot of home bars, not just here in the States, but globally, that have been picking up. We've shipped over to like seven different countries already. Really? And how many have you shipped? The first batch was 1,500. Okay. Yeah. And so we just got our second batch, but we're breaking up and packaging. Mm -hmm. and I think we have 3,000 of those. So it's exponential growth, and yeah. eventually it'll probably be like 30,000, 50,000. Yeah, well, our, our overall first major production is about 43,000. It's a lot of these hangy things. And we're about 80% through. Wow, that's absolutely incredible. So there are two versions. This is a vintage one here, right? Yeah. That so one. this is actually from, do we have any idea what era, like what era or what uh, decade it's from? Definitely from the 60s and 70s. And that was the one that was predominantly produced by Orchids of Hawaii. Out oh, of wow. Japan. So the same company that made the lamps. Right, yeah. yeah. And uh, what, tiki mugs too? Mugs, lamps, yeah. powdered mixes. A lot of garnishes. Pretty incredible. And then, so you have the two different varieties here. You have the hanging one, and then you also have the, uh, like this, what, uh, what do you call the other one? The, the well, upright, the erect one? <laughs> no, straight pick. Straight pick. So yeah, yeah we have the, the hanging lantern. We have the hanging lantern with a bead. We have the straight pick, and then we have the bent pick. Can we talk about the light up stuff at all? Yeah, sure. I just started playing around with the idea. These are lamps. So why not have lighted lamps? And so I've been looking at all kinds of different mechanisms in, in different lighting that would possibly work inside of it. And so I finally found one that I'm pretty happy with. Mm -hmm. I did kind of put the teaser out there a few times on our Instagram just to see what people thought. And it was like a pretty good response. It's definitely not that authentic vintage, but if you're just trying to add a little bit of, of show to, you know, your drink and your guests. That, For sure. That, right? It's just, it's a fun thing to have. I love all of the super traditional tiki stuff, like era correct, but I also love going to Trader Sam's and getting a, a light up ice cube yeah. in my drink and it makes your drink glow and it's it's fun. It's part of the show. It's part of the show. Definitely. Like tiki is about escapism and fun and uh, I don't think anybody's gonna be bummed on that. Is there as an option, you can get the vintage lamp yeah. that we're reproducing without it, or maybe you do happen to like it, it's there, you know? We'll yeah. be selling them in little packs, you know? Yeah, so our Etsy is the Contigo Tiki Bar. If you wanna go ahead and purchase uh, the lanterns, we're Chinese gonna lantern have those. ChineseLanternPick.com. Yeah, ChineseLanternPick.com. We'll take you straight to the Etsy page as well. The exact time that we're launching it, tomorrow, Saturday, December 5th. Last time, they sold out in hours. Really? Before we woke up. <laughs> oh, that's right, yeah. Because we did a little announcement or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's exciting. I've done some research on the Chinese hanging lantern as well. You don't see them pop up too much in vintage tiki menus and illustrations and stuff. Well, tell me about what you found, because I'm sure you guys have really labored over this, like discovering them. Well, the original place that I found the image was in the Hawaiian village menu. And in Waikiki. In Waikiki, right, with Harry Yee. And so 
just going through Google searches and just finding images, I found it and I was just like, oh my goodness, mm -hmm. I freaking love that. And then I tried to find them and you just couldn't find them. And then the one time that I did, it was like 60 bucks for like a pack of flowers. Oh, yeah. And yeah. it wasn't even the actual hanging, it was the bed pick. So oh, okay. it was like, what, six of those? I, I found I like, like a pack of like six to eight. They were like 80 bucks and then yeah. shipping. And I was wow. like, what, do you really want these? <laughs> that was really the first spot that we found the hanging lantern was on the menu and it was you know in the top of punch mm -hmm. in the top of punch mug that's kind of where the whole thing started and i tried to find similar mm -hmm. images and yeah there it's not like the the pineapple and cherry where it's garnishing you know 50 percent of the drinks <laughs> yeah right so it was definitely one of those garnishes it was for very special drinks but like what a treat to have this thing show up in your drink like a lot of people would order a drink just for that garnish so the hawaiian village in waikiki was where Harry Yee was a bartender from about 1950 and he was lead bartender for over 30 years mm -hmm. and also known for placing the first orchid in a cocktail. Really? Yeah, so there's actually a lot of history behind wow. these picks. But yeah, Harry Yee uh, made the... Blue Hawaiian. Really? Yeah. Hawaiian. Which is a vodka drink yeah. Hawaii, with orange yeah. or with blue curacao. Blue Hawaii Weird. or blue Hawaiian? The blue Hawaii, yeah. he made the... Hawaiian eye. Hawaiian oh, eye, 60, which is 60, it's 59 to 60. Because I think the cast, when they were filming there, were staying at the Hawaiian village or they were doing a lot of the filming there. That's rad. Yeah, there was a T so if you're not if you're not aware, there was a TV show called The Hawaiian Eye. It was kind of the precursor to Hawaii Five O, and it was really more tiki than the Hawaii Five O ever was, or even Gilligan's Island or any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's a good one. Who, uh, who was in Hawaii uh, Hawaiian Eye? Like a, like Debbie Reynolds or something, like giant. Connie something. Connie Francis. <laughs> Sorry. But also the Hawaiian Village, I think, was home to, I think, Martin Denny at a time. Is, am I correct or no, am I yeah, totally you're wrong? Right. Okay. Uh, Arthur Lyman. Arthur Lyman, yeah. Lyman. So really like an epicenter of uh, exotica and tiki culture at the time. They're super excited to bring you this incredible garnish. And we are excited to bring you a drink from Harry Yi at the Hawaiian Village. Hawaiian Village. So what year is the cocktail that we're gonna make? What year is that from? So the Top of Punch is from 1959. And with that, it was the first cocktail to actually have an umbrella adorn it, so. Adorn it. The Top of Punch, that's what we're gonna make. For this cocktail, we will be using lime, lemon, simple syrup, peach brandy, dark Jamaican rum, and light Puerto Rican rum from Cuba? Puerto it's Rico. actually Puerto Rico. This is, this is the Puerto Rican version. <laughs> but it says Havana. It does, I know. right? <laughs> but it's made of Puerto Rico. So there's Havana, Puerto Rico, and then there's the true Havana, Cuba. Oh. Bacardi and, and- Bacardi owns Bacardi. Havana. Uh, Havana so they can't say that it's Cuban, it's, they have to say Puerto Rican rum now. Mm. There was like this, not, yeah. I don't know, like, like 20 year lawsuit. Wow. Yeah. All right, sorry, Cuba. <laughs> Screw it again. Good. So this is another one of those cocktails that annoy me is in that you have to make an ingredient before you make the cocktail. Yeah. And it has sweet and sour sauce. No, not sweet, no. Right? <laughs> sweet and sour mix, right? Yeah. In the cocktail. So we're gonna learn how to make sweet and sour mix first. Tell me about sweet and sour mix. So there's two ways that you can do it. There is. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Cause it's always easy. Uh -huh. I just <laughs> I, when it comes to tiki cocktails, aren't they just simple and straightforward? No. And nobody can agree on like the, the proper ingredients or proper rums for like a mai tai. <laughs> okay. Tell me the way that we're gonna make the uh, the sweet and sour. We're mix. gonna go with a 50% simple, 25% lime, and then 25% mm -hmm. lemon juice. We feel like it oh. it balances out like the acidity. The lime, of course, a little bit sweeter. All right. That's how we like to make it. Well then, let's start with cutting a lime in half. <laughs> There's a lot of sawing going on there. <laughs> Try not to lose a finger. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to make one serving. We're gonna multiply it by three, but we're only gonna show us making one of these things. And then by the magic of cinema, there will be three that will magically appear. So that's what's happening now. The three quarter ounces of lime juice. Squeeze away. Look at those guns. Why she wore the tank today? <laughs> Super strong. We're gonna need way more lime, so. Yeah. Okay, so there's three quarters of lime juice. Okay, so we're gonna cut another lemon in half. And then squeezing, what'd you say? Three quarters of an ounce? Three quarter ounce, okay. yes. 
Okay, so that is three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. So now simple syrup, right? Ounce and a half. Ounce and a half? Yep. Ounce really? and a half. Yeah. Oh, we did three. Oh, we're, are we making, so this is enough for this, one. This is one person's yeah. worth of soup. Sweet, and sweet and sour? sour? Yeah. Really? It's yeah. Three ounces of it's sweet three ounces and sour. Three ounces of sweet and sour. Ah. So three quarters, three quarters. Yes. <laughs> All right, ounce and a half of sugar, water. Cool. Okay. So ounce and a half of simple syrup. So that right there is the sweet and sour mix. Yes. I keep wanting to say sweet and sour sauce, but that's a different thing. That's for um, Chinese food. Yeah. Chinese food? Japanese food. Chinese. Chinese. Okay. Well, is this the brandy that you guys use? We use Gaffard. Yeah. Oh. It works. Does, is there any different? I don't know what the difference is. Yeah, I wouldn't know. Yeah. This is going to be the first time we're going to try it, but when mm. you're getting good label stuff, the, you can't really The go reason wrong. why we had the Gaffard was because we were making oh. the trade wins. And then they told us. Oh, to well, because at False Idol, the bartender, oh, it one of our friends, good. Eric, was. Oh, that smells delicious. Yeah. It smells pretty similar. So mm. at False Idol, they use Gaffard. And so that's why we switched up to the card. <clears throat> it's hard to argue with False Idol. Yeah. Yeah, pretty stellar <laughs> drinks. But tonight we're using Marie Blizzard. <laughs> what, what is it called? Yeah. It is. Brizzard. Oh, Brizzard. 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 Yeah. Marie Brizzard. Half ounce. Half ounce. Can you see it? No, I can't. Oh, okay. That's like an ounce. <laughs> Do you want me to pour it out? Yeah. Are you have to drink it. And drink it? <laughs> yeah. Okay, you want to pour it in here? I'll just throw it in the grass. Really? Yeah. yeah. yeah Astro's going to be looking it up a little bit. Uh -huh. He's going to get drunk. Off a of peach brandy. <laughs> All right, that's for the raccoon. My for oh. oh. What? The raccoon. Try <laughs> bandit. Peach brandy. Yeah, have fun. Jeez, I don't think I need any peach brandy. All right, you want to do the dark Jamaican rum first? Sure. Three ounces. Yeah. So three ounces. Yeah. Oh wait, yeah, three ounces dark Jamaican. Yeah, this is a freaking tall one. This is zombie level. Whoa, man. Hold Sur on, everybody. Surprise. There's three ounces of dark Jamaican rum. Oh my God. I actually <laughs> already- <laughs> not there. I know. I, I gotta be honest with you. I actually already had a Tiki Puka Puka before they got here. Oh, and turns right. out Tiki Puka Puka gets you wasted. This cocktail has three ounces of dark Jamaican rum and an ounce of the fake Cuban rum, the Puerto Rican. Yeah, Banna Club Cuba still exists. Mm. So you can still get their stuff. We'll bring you some next time. From Cuba? Yeah, from Make Cuba. We have some. We have some at home. Oh, I thought you were going to go to Cuba to get it. No, okay. no. But Don't yeah. go to that much trouble. <laughs> so three ounces of dark Jamaican Caruba uh, around. I don't know if I have three ounces in there, do I? No. Mm. Yeah, so with the, the dark Jamaican, you can either go with the Appleton's 12 or the Caruba, which is kind of our two choices. And when we look back to some of the older drinks, we feel that okay. the Caruba really kind of fits into that genre. Okay. Not to say, like, we do Appleton's 12 almost in everything, but this is one of the few drinks where we actually choose Caruba over our Appleton's okay. 12. Okay, and you guys make this drink a lot, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess you guys know what it tastes like. I don't. Uh, <laughs> I wrote down the recipe, but I have no idea even like paying attention to it, how much rum was in here. It just wasn't, I was, I was it like, didn't register. All right, three of this, one of this, and I didn't realize it was like four ounces of rum. Yeah, no, this one's a good one. Once you start really mixing cocktails a lot, yeah. you start realizing how many ounces of rum are in each drink yeah. and what they do to you. <laughs> oh yeah, you're like, oh, that's how that, that <laughs> Yeah, that's that's what's gonna that's happen. That's what three, yeah, four shots happen. does to me. <laughs> and then you get two drinks and you're like, oh, the next morning. <laughs> <laughs> totally, in somebody else's house. Okay. Uh, an ounce. ounce of that. Pour that into the thing. You know, Harry Yee wasn't much of a drinker. Really? And That's why he made it with four ounces. <laughs> so he would most of the time just ask his patrons or he might just take a sip and he would name them just off of that. Like, really? The top of punch. He so was, how did he know what, what tasted good? He would ask his patrons, oh. what do you think of this? And he basically, you know, reverbed off of them and that's how he would make his drinks. It's like a deaf person making music. I mean, that's kind of what it is. Yeah. Like if you can't hear, but you're like, was that good? Can I, even, <laughs> can I put that in the show? Like, I don't even know if that's offensive or what. Well, I'm gonna it's a good analogy. It. It's a correct analogy. See, America and yes. other outlying nations. So that's the cocktail right there, right? Yes. Okay. We're gonna fill that with ice, right? The tin. What is this? That's not convenient at all. Did you guys watch uh, Kelly Merrill's tutorial on this show about how to shake a cocktail? Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> we we actually recorrected our shake. Yep, me too. I so. was I was told that I'm an idiot. Well, so, you know, he said it nicer than that. He 
So I, I'm reading further on the directions and it says fill a 14 ounce tiki mug with crushed ice, then add ingredients and stir to chill. Garnish with pineapple wedge. Is it Cocktail no cherry. Oh. Well. There's always the five in print. And, and as much as that sounds absolutely ridiculous to me, like we know that that was written for a purpose. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, it's almost like a swizzle. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Okay, so uh, we're gonna fill this glass with ice. How much ice? Uh, about 14 ounces. What the hell's 14 ounces? <laughs> to your heart's content. <laughs> there you go. Is, is that? Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah. That's we'll, not gonna fit. We'll swizzle, oh well, yeah. Well, well, it's gonna dilute a little bit. We'll okay. See. All right. Anna, you want to pour that in there? This is the science of tiki. Are you nervous? Are you going to pour it all over the, the counter? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good call. On wow. The oh, good Look job, at Spike. The, well, I am a professional. Yeah. yeah. Totally not a professional. We need something to stir this with, right? Okay, I have this fancy vintage stirry guy. Oh, and as you said earlier, stir to your heart's content. Okay. Stir to my heart's content? This is... Garnish with pineapple wedge and cocktail cherry. Okay. This is this is no joke when it's, it comes to that. Is that garnish game? This is a mess. I am horrible at. No, I gotta go get cherries. Well, according to Harry Yi, per his instructions. Oh, it's cherry orchid and paper parasol. Okay. Yeah, this this freaking garnish game is lit. I'm so curious about the history of maraschino cherries and cocktails because. You said that the cheap cherry is the one that we want to use, not the fancy Luxardo one. Right? Yeah. Use that thing. That's a stabber. And then, uh, oh, there, look at that. Go fishing. Oh, it's kind of rusty, but that's whatever. I had my tetanus shot. Good uh, enough. It's like the, oh, you got it. Yeah, it's like. Yeah, skewer that thing. Okay. Yeah, that is really quite the. Uh, that is a disgusting cherry. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want a different one? Yeah, maybe. Maybe we should find another one. Do you want or whatever, <laughs> yeah. Pick a pretty one. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't see inside the jar. The cherry's gonna make or break it. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, and then stab the uh, the pineapple in there. I think you can just stab it through the side, and then just set it in there, all the way. <laughs> slide it, slide it all the way up. Yeah, and then just just stick it in there. There it is. Yeah. Garnish. Yeah. All okay. Right. And then, what else? Oh, and then we're well, going to let's put a straw in it. Okay. A Vanda orchid. This may be the most elaborately garnished cocktail we've had in the breezeway. Although I did have dry ice at one point. And finally. Wow. Finally. That is exciting. The Hanging Lantern. There it is. And so from 1959 at the Hawaiian Village, this is the Tapa Punch featuring the Hanging Chinese Lantern Garnish. The very first cocktail to have a lantern. All right. We're gonna make three more and then uh, give you our opinion about what we think of it. By the magic of cinema. <laughs> Three tapa punches from the Hawaiian Village in 1959. Cheers, right, everybody. Thanks. So, uh, salute. Thank Cheers. you so much for joining me in the breezeway. Thank, thank you. you for having us. And thank you so much from the Tiki World for recreating these incredible garnishes. <sighs> to Harry Yee. To Harry Yee. Oh, yeah. My God, that's good. Wow. Agree. This is an incredible cocktail. It's super boozy, but like in a controlled way and in a very delicious way. I'm afraid that if I had 17 of these, I'd be wandering the streets. Probably two of them. Talking to myself. <laughs> two, yeah, probably two. Two of them, you probably right. realistically you'd Probably two of them. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty much on par with a zombie, but it's not. You mean alcohol wise? Yeah. yeah. Because it's literally what, four and a quarter ounces of alcohol, which is close to a zombie. I almost think this tastes better than a zombie. It's definitely a different taste. Yeah. On what you're looking for. It's different. But it's not as, as aggressive as a zombie. Yeah. As I think zombies are, are they're kind of more, sh like they're sharper. Well, you have the grapefruit notes and then mm -hmm. you have the absinthe in there. So the Pernod definitely gives that. Kind of licorice, licorice kind of, yeah, yeah. This one's almost deceptive because it's like a sipper. Yeah. But then you're like, oh wait, there's four and a quarter ounces of alcohol. like <laughs> alcohol booze in this. This is a good one. Make this one at home. Yeah. Seriously. What was the other one I made the other night? The Tiki Puka Puka? Oh, yeah. I tried that again tonight before we did this. And I was like, make the second one at home. I 
don't think you need to make either of them at home. But this is so good. This is super good. No, we love it. Yeah, it's and you make it a lot at home, right? Yeah. It's our go-to. Go is it really? Yeah. yeah. It's a lot of steps, but yeah. it's worth it. It's funny because I think somebody in an interview asked Martin Kate, uh, owner of Smuggler's Cove and writer of books on cocktails and stuff. They asked him what he normally drinks at home. Like, does he make these big fancy drinks? And he's like, no, I usually just drink like rum neat yeah. or make like a rum old fashioned or, or, or daiquiri, I think it was his, his thing. Uh, these are a lot of work. Yeah. But all tiki cocktails are kind of a lot of work. And I mean, even when you're squeezing, I mean, to squeeze the juice versus dumping it out of a carton, I mean, that's work in itself. It really is. And even like for for me, like going to the tree and harvesting limes <laughs> with my bare hands. Which did happen off camera earlier. Yeah, it did. back breaking work. <laughs> so where was the first place that you saw one of these illustrated in a cocktail? So the first time I saw the, the Hanging Lantern was on the menu mm -hmm. for the Hawaiian Village. Oh, okay. But we just online or something? Which I saw online, yeah, just okay. Googling. I, who knows if it was Google Images or Pinterest yeah, or, yeah. you know, it was just 3 a.m. on a summer night. And 3 a.m.? Well, because I, ha I have summers off. Huh. So, yeah, just uh, looking at images. And this is really when I was diving into Tiki okay. and, and really informing myself and researching and trying to understand the history. As a historian, that's always, you know, my big mm. thing. So, totally. looking, looking into the history and and learning about drinks, it was just anything and everything that was tiki and like really trying to go back to the roots of it. Mm -hmm. So of course that takes you back to Don, it takes you back to Vic and then yeah. everything else that just spawns from that and all the different images. And those were really the things that I was looking for is, you know, presentation, what were the garnishes? And that's where I found the hanging lantern. I was like, oh my God. And just, I don't know what it was about the hanging lantern, but that was it. I was in love with it from mm -hmm. that point on. And so it was trying to find other images of these hanging lanterns, which, you know, I found a lot. Oh. So looking at the lanterns here, I found that they also had a hanging lantern with the bead that was illustrated in another menu. And then uh, the orchids of Hawaii had these two mm -hmm. in, in their brochure or their catalog. Mm -hmm. So it was just a matter of just like looking at different older images that you know, could at least date back to the 50s and 60s. That's exciting, and that that's kind of where my passion lies for the show, too. I mean, I, I know you guys have watched it once or twice. Um, What's the name of the show? <laughs> but I've always talked about the time warp that happens when you drink the drink in the glass that it was served in. Yeah. And when it was specifically something that Trader Vic said, we're gonna serve this one cocktail in this one glass, like the skull mug or the tiki stem champagne glass or whatever. And I think that this does that same kind of thing. Yeah, for some people it's just, hey, I'm looking for like a cocktail, have fun. And then there's other people who really are into that, like the authenticity and what was mm -hmm. the experience. And it's the garnish, it's trying to use the best rums possible for that particular recipe. Absolutely. To really get a sense of you know the cocktails the era and mm -hmm. even the way we we create our tiki rooms or tiki bars is are we leaning more you know, like forward and present or trying to harken back to something that that really goes to the you know the roots of tiki i sincerely appreciate the um those sentiments because I love the idea that a lot of people want to do these animatronic things and tiki bars and all those kinds of things. But I, you know, the breezeway was modeled after kind of the Trader Vic's Don the Beachcomber. Yeah, like the pre-tiki era, right? Well, I, yeah, I guess it would be, I guess it would really be like the, the golden age of tiki because pre-tiki would be- Because you do have tikis. <laughs> There's yeah. a ton of tikis, yeah. But I, but I get what you're saying. Early, the early Earlier, stages of, yeah. yeah. And of course, like I love Trader Sam's and, and all those kinds of places, but exactly what you were saying. I, It's the time warp, it's the historical time travel thing. Yeah, I think, you know, <clears throat> Tiki Files find that area of Tiki that they really, that resonates with them. Yeah. Like you said, the Trader Sam's thing is, a lot of people love that. And mm -hmm. dude, that place is freaking it's awesome. Fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Miss it. Yeah. It's going there. You know, because there is that ele the element of, you know, all these cool things. You order a drink and some volcano's gonna go off or it's gonna start to storm and Right. To me the hanging the hanging lantern garnish is almost like on par with the drink on fire thing. 
Obviously, it's not not as exciting as the drink on fire, but it's it shows up at your at your table and you go, Whoa, dude, look at this thing. What's yeah. why is what's this hangy thing? Is it's really cool. Yeah, it's like a tiki bar in a glass. Seriously. You know what oh, I mean? Like seriously. Look at look at everything that's happening here. <laughs> I know. It's so rad. I mean, and this is where I think. Carrie Yi pushed Vic and Dawn to like really up their game in garnishing because they, oh. they were garnishing, but this is really where. Well, you said he was the first one to, yeah. to put an orchid to in lay the glass. An orchid in there, and then like not. I an mean, umbrella. you got the orchid, you got the pineapple, the cherry umbrella. I mean, it's like yeah, he went full out. Yeah, the tropical itch with the back scratcher. Come on. <laughs> like, I know. Dude, who throws a back scratcher in, in a, a cocktail? I know, right? And then I always like when I'm using mint. I always like to use a ton oh, of mint. The smell. Yeah. I, oh. Every time you get a cocktail and there's like one little wimpy piece of mint in it, I just go, ah. dude, come Why on. Why bother? <laughs> I know, yeah. But it, it's like with tiki, literally more is more. I really think so. That's, I would agree. Yeah. I mean, it's got to be the right more. Do you know what I mean? Like, it can't be. There is a line where some people go into pirate and some like there's other stuff yeah. and uh, Jimmy Buffett and that kind of thing. Oh, that's the type of punch kicking in for truth. Truth. Sorry. Yeah, you're, yeah, I think you're right. I think I'm wasted again. It, it keeps happening. Yay! It's like happening more and more on these cocktail Mission shows. Mission accomplished. We're getting wasted with Spike. <laughs> Who? We would have never thought. Yeah, I would have never thought either. Dreams come true. But you just keep wishing, kids. Keep on wishing. I like this drink. Right. Wait, we didn't really talk about like, do, oh, do yeah. we talk about the drink? Let's talk it's about fine. it. No, this is a freaking, There's I think that the, like, the dark rum really carries this one. Yeah. Ounces. <laughs> three ounces. Three ounces. For a reason. Yeah. Can you, you get... taste the peach liqueur? I think so. Can you? I For me, it's hard to like, find it in the drink because of the dark Jamaican rum. I feel like it's, yeah. it's the back note in your nose as you're drinking. Yeah, I think, yeah, I can sense that too. I don't know, you know, the, the thing is, look man, I'm not a professional drink taster. No. But I'm a professional way. drinker though. Yeah. But I've drank a lot of cocktails now. Well, I drank a lot of cocktails before the show. I a lot of cocktails. That was just warming up. It's true. But I, I've always said that I'm not a professional. I'm not like a sommelier. I have a question that I always ask everybody that's on the, on the show. What's your favorite tiki bar? Is, is your favorite tiki bar the same as his favorite tiki bar? The Contigo? Mm. <laughs> yeah, the Contigo. Your home tiki bar is your favorite? No, I think for me, my favorite tiki bar has to be the Zombie Village. Even I've never though been to the Zombie Village. It, it is very modern in, yeah. in its extent, but the way they bring about their magic to the experience mm -hmm. and the bartenders and our experience there overall was just phenomenal. And that's um, that's Doc works there, right? Doc, yeah, Doc. Yeah. Or he Amazing owns it. Amazing dude, he's so right. Yeah, love Doc. No, serious. Like, does Doc, he own it? Samson. Bar manager. Bar manager. Yeah. Good work, Doc. Right. I really, I Where does he own it? I don't know if he I, owns I it. I, I don't know. Doc, do you own the what? Zombie Village. Zombie, zombie village. village. Speaking of Zombie Village. <laughs> All right. Here, was your pancreas like, oh, right there. Yeah. <laughs> Totally. I don't feel like anybody cared about the Halloween episode. Oh, I like that. You know it. what? Screw I thought them. it was awesome. I don't know. Sugar Pepper, like, she was, like, scary. Oh, you know what I did wrong with that Kona coffee thing, though? Is you're supposed to hold... You with left the... the lid open. <laughs> you're, supposed... <laughs> you're supposed to hold uh, the thing on fire down below as you're pouring it. So the oh. fire climbs up the, the stream. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So the drink is supposed to be on fire. Yeah, I did, that on, I did that on a, um, on a Zoom it. live show like the next night, because I, I did some more research, but I was wearing a gorilla suit. Yeah. It's really hard to do that. So like real quick point on, on Anna's favorite tiki bar is that mm. the way Don and Vic really set the stage, mm -hmm. I think that zombies, the other side to that story as to where are we today and right. what can you bring to, okay. to that. Yeah, yeah. And so zombie village, amazing mm -hmm. for me again because i'm more of a i'm more of a person who really appreciates the vintage mai kai <laughs> yeah it's that's no surprise for a lot of people but for myself yeah. the mai kai and we always heard like it's the mothership is three nights and days there oh, that's yeah. <laughs> we spent three nights and days at the mai kai i mean just living it up and and again, like you say, when yeah. you're just trying to find that experience and like, what was it like? What were they experiencing? 
there's no better place to go to to get that experience than the Maikai. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was the full show, and it was so funny because I was telling her we <laughs> flew east to Florida to get the Polynesian experience when Hawaii was like five yeah, hours out. Yeah. <laughs> and I told her the irony of it, but what we were really looking for was that tiki experience was this 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 what faux Polynesian for sure. And like that, yeah. they brought it together, whereas. Hawaii was a little bit different in the setting, but for me, it's the Mai Kai. Yeah, so the, the interesting thing about that is that you go to Hawaii today and you won't get the traditional Hawaiian experience that you would actually get in Florida, in Fort Lauderdale, at the Mai Kai. And don't attack me online, because I know that a lot of people are probably like, Hawaii is Hawaii, and you can't fake Hawaii, but uh, you can do the historical version of Hawaii. But Maikai is this like Polynesian. Polynesian is this open multi ethnic multicultural encompassment. Right. That's brought together in one place. Yeah. It's, yeah, Polynesian. Yeah. With that, you know, vintage tiki experience. Yeah. You can't beat it. As we were talking, I was trying to figure out what my favorite and it, it always is the Maikai. But then I think, you know, I think about all the ones, all the tiki bars in San Francisco and like the Tonga Room and, you know, the Tonga And you said you went to that place back in college. I did, yeah. And it was kind of a mess because they didn't really know what they were. They didn't really know what the tiki thing was. So the drinks were a mess, like the hors d'oeuvres, everything. Uh, it's really, last time I was there, it was probably like four years ago and it's really dialed in, it seems like. The drinks are better. I don't think you're gonna get like a phenomenal cocktail there, but you're gonna get a good cocktail. Yeah, we went two years ago and, and the game really was pushed. I mean, I yeah. think that, like the game has been pushed because you're either gonna sink yeah. or swim now yeah. in the Tiki, you know. For sure. Especially the Tonga Room with all the bars around it. They yeah. had to. Oh, for sure, yeah. Yes. I mean, San Francisco is really like arguably Dude, like the ground zero that. for Tiki now. Like per yeah. square mile, Tiki bars there mm -hmm. or Tiki restaurants, it's unbelievable. And but Tiki yeah. Bob is still there. Yes. Long and they Tiki painted Bob. him back to normal. Know, He's not green awesome. anymore. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I have a picture uh, of him when he was green with me. Uh, oh, well, yeah. I mean, I was with him because that's <laughs> where he lives. But yeah, no, San Francisco is incredible. And San Diego is really good for Tiki. Mm -hmm. Dude, we're like, we, we at least have False Idol. At Grass least. skirts there, but like False Idol. False Idol's incredible. Dude, I've only been there once. Yeah. What? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah, I was there with Kelly Merrill and Davis Stala and some some other friends, and um, we had spent all day going to bars, and then we get to yeah, False Idol, and I had like a test pilot, Oof. and wow. like uh, that hard, like a 151 swizzle. Oh, it, dude, it was, a, and then we took the train back home, and I, <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> Kelly Merrill had to uh, call Uber for me. I was like, I don't I know. I would think so. I was like, I don't know how to work this anymore. My oh, phone. Yeah. yeah. Good times at the False Idol. Thanks, Kelly. Yeah. That's a good friend. Mm -hmm. Folks, please, if you enjoyed this, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. We bring you like historical tiki drinks and culture. Like Garnishes. <laughs> Garnishes. Like, come on. Like nobody else does. They're not even close. I mean, well, they don't even, they don't do it. Once again, I want to thank my friends from the Contigo Tiki Bar for stopping by and showing us these incredible garnishes that they're bringing back to the market. Be sure to go follow their Instagram and, and buy some Chinese lantern picks. ChineseLanternPick.com. Etsy. Our handle on Instagram. At Contigo Tiki Bar if you guys want to follow us as well. Follow them. You might win some lanterns. Oh, there you go. All right, aloha. Cheers. Cheers. Aloha. Cheers. Hmm. It's a good drink. Join me in the breezeway. Show. <laughs> this is Emma and Greg. Anna. Anna. That's what I said. <laughs> so it's ex excrement. Excrement. It's exponential. <laughs> oh, shit. Are we, wait, are we using orange? I don't know. <laughs> you had one there. Why did I put an orange there? There's no orange in this. <laughs> I was like, what do I squeeze? Oh, no, no yeah. Let's just do one Yeah, it's a rather huge treat. Okay, so, yeah. Well, Okay, so I had no idea how I, I wrote down the directions or the instructions, the recipe. Reading, recipe. Welcome to the Contigo Tiki Bar Happy Hour. Uh, usually we do this from our home bar, but today we're out and about at the Breezeway. 
finally making uh, one of our Tiki dreams come true today. Yeah, so uh, another box checked off the... Old bucket list. Yeah, we're just gonna appropriate the... Bre oh, Spike's back. <laughs> so, <laughs> so welcome to Spike's Breezeway. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell's always going on here? Yeah. It's gotta, there's gotta be consistency. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, cho I chopped these videos up so much that the consistency so it doesn't matter. I mean, just the like, the cutting of this pineapple would go into one of your next uh, videos that you make. You, you think I should do a, a pineapple cutting tutorial? Harry Yee, he was the Michael Jordan of garnishes. Is that what you're gonna do? Pretty much. Because that was Kobe. <laughs> Michael Jordan. Depends on the era that you're talking about. I was a soccer player. And so from 1959 at the what place? Swizzle them in there. Okay. Thanks. I've seen the show. All right, so from 1959, from the Hawaiian, vil Hawaiian village? Yes. Three cocktails, three donga, what? What are they called? <laughs> Tonga punch. Donga Top punch. Of. Top of it. <laughs> three tap a pen. Oh my <laughs> God's sakes. <clears throat> By the. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Wait, hold on, there's a helicopter. <laughs> this is uncomfortable. Oh, for <laughs> sake. <laughs> the sprinklers now? <laughs> Who runs this show? <laughs> What's going on? It's fine, the sprinklers are fine. It sounds like the ocean. Oh, it's, it's like raining. Don Beach. It is like Don Beach. Nice. Oh, everything about, so with Tiki, Get off me. You know the Hula Girls played a Jimmy Buffett festival in I think Lake Tahoe or something? They were very friendly people. So I take that comment back. No, they... <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we... I absolutely am... am I, you know, I'm sure Mr. Buffett's a lovely gentleman. He doesn't and care he, what I think anyway, so... No, no, dude, he's swimming in his swimming pool of money, like Scrooge McDuck. Yeah, I can <laughs> see your breath. I can see your breath. <laughs> <laughs> It's That's cold. how hot and humid it is in SoCal, so be jealous. Yeah. Nebraska. <laughs> is that what you're gonna do? <laughs> oh no, this show is rapidly devolved. We you can know. possibly bring it full circle though. What are we gonna if do? If we go far enough down, we can bring it back up. Oh really? Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Totally. Can you, you get... taste the peach liqueur? Can you taste the peach liqueur? <laughs> oh no. Is it a froth, eh? uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. But. Wait, what was I gonna say? I don't know. A water sommelier at that. <laughs> Definitely not a water Go to sommelier. LA, get a VIP table for your water sommelier. Yeah, we were Everyone talking earlier. Everyone's gonna know what that is. <laughs> really? There's only one person. This crap out. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Water sommelier. Oh, you attack, <laughs> it's a very specific person that does that. <laughs> that is a very specific That's person. That's what I'm saying, it's like, do you really wanna go there? Oh. Aren't there water sommeliers Oh, you mean everywhere? like he's gonna come after us? I don't know. The, wa <laughs> the water sommelier? Yeah, he's gonna be outside. The water sommelier is probably the last person on earth that I'm, I would be afraid of. Probably, yeah. Well, it's funny because if you do go to Hawaii now, you won't get the Hawaiian experience that you will get at Fort Lauderdale, or in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Like, that is so yeah. scary, <laughs> oh my god. You won't get this. Overdub it. Shit, now I gotta find a photo and then put the photo in yeah. the thing. Stay tuned for that just, photo. I just did that to myself. Damn it. Yeah, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, thanks again to my friends from the Con Tigo Tiki Lounge and their incredible resurgence of, uh, resurgence? Yeah, Con Tigo Tiki Bar. Con Tigo, God damn it. I've used it a lot too. I just spit all over the Chinese lantern That's things. how we like It's a creeper, that's the problem. The problem <laughs> is I, I probably want like at least another one. <laughs> that's Let's the, yeah, it. there you and go. there's way too much alcohol. Dude, it's like four freaking out. There's too much alcohol in there. There was um, Trader Vic's. Did is there you... ever too much? Yeah, there totally is. I didn't stop the zombie. So Trader Vic <laughs> had a quote about the zombie, and he's like, this is a foolish drink. There's too much alcohol in this. Yeah, of course. I mean, he probably called him a dirty stinker. That was like the thing that, that he always called thing, him. Yeah, yeah, he's like. Like what sensible person Don... puts like four freaking ounces in one cocktail? I mean. I don't know, but it's so well balanced that. It doesn't taste like rad. four ounces. And that's, the, that's, that's the crazy drink. Drink. No, this is like a next day, all day couch cocktail. Oh yeah. Like you're not. No. Like this. Not. You're not going jogging or sailing or anything. No. Sailing. What's you your sailing? routine? Bed, couch, floor. Bed, couch, floor. That's my my cycle. 
bed couch floor. Bed couch floor. Wait, how does that, so how does that work? You roll out of bed, yeah. hit the couch, roll on the floor. Why do you roll on the floor? Well, because you need to change up, but you don't want to stand up, so you're like, we're kind of like next. <laughs> it, it's the backyard of me. <laughs> right? The best invention for people that drink too much is uh, is Uber. Like, uh, no, not Uber. Uh, well, that is, too. <laughs> That's another one, yeah. Yeah, they say that saved the Sunset Strip. Mm. Because all of a sudden, people were, like, people were able to go out again. Yeah. Like, DoorDash, though. Oh. Pink Dot, you remember Pink Dot? Yeah, that was the Hollywood DoorDash. Yeah, that thing's old school, swingers. Swingers! Justin Scard and I were talking about Favreau the other no day. Way. He's like, oh, Favreau's like the comic book director guy. And I'm like, dude, Favreau's the swingers guy. Swingers, yeah, him and, um, what's his Vince name? Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn. Yeah. The, the Karuba rum. When yes. you guys said that we had to use the Karuba rum, I spent <laughs> 30 minutes trying to get the boobs off that thing. <laughs> oh! You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> For the Corbuba rum? We've seen the boobs. I couldn't have it on the show. It's very inappropriate. So, we just put tape we over. We could have we put <laughs> nitrogen <laughs> on it. <laughs> 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 tassels. They could have been tassels. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Oh, there you go.